I'm a Paul Eastwood, mid thirties. <laughs> or should I say, yeah, late thirties. Um, and I own a company called Pollen Consulting Group. Um, the business was um, a management consultancy focused in a sector, that sector being the, uh, the food industry, where we would work with businesses to improve their supply chain. Pollen was started in 2016. Pollen employs 23 full-time employees and a couple of contractors. The customers that we have really range from family-owned um, businesses, turning over around about 50 million, up to ASX listed and even into global uh, manufacturing businesses. And we really work with the CEO of that business down through their operational team into manufacturing, supply chain and, and department leads. So I decided to start my own business for a couple of reasons really. The first and main one being is I'd always had an inkling that I wanted to do something myself. And at the time in my life when I didn't have um, much as a risk in terms of family or, or outgoings, I could take that risk. So that, that was a real driver to the timing of doing it. And I think the other reason was, was I really felt we could do something different. I really felt the company that I worked for previously and the companies that existed around us were getting old and we could bring something new. And the only way to do that was to start something fresh. So when I came to set up the business, it all happened very quickly, but I think we did the right amount of research in terms of, I went and talked to people I knew in the industry, told them what I was thinking, what I wanted to do and why, and knew some real kind of friends as sounding boards and business leaders as sounding boards to give me the confidence. In terms of did I build a full business plan and financials, I put something together but actually, you know, my view would be that that wasn't the real reason for starting it. The real reason for starting it was the understanding that other people believed in what we were trying to do. Yeah, I think, you know, obviously you start a business and the first thing is getting revenue in. Um, we had a couple of clients that were very early in supporting us from people we knew to get the business up and running, which was great. But I think the first time we got a completely new client who we'd never known before into the business, that really won, gave us the boost that we knew we could. And that helped us keep remembering that, that we can get new businesses. Um, and also to remember to celebrate the successes as they come. So if we talk about things that didn't work, um, I think, you know, through the life of the business, there's probably hundreds of lessons that you learn. But a couple that stand out to me really is, one is probably not taking the time to reflect with the team on where we come from. And so what do I mean by that? Well, I think at times you run at 100 miles an hour and you have wins and you just keep focused on the next win because you're growing your business. And actually it's really important to sit down with your team and actually talk about the success you've had and then realize the the journey early on, because if not, they'll get lost in thinking that we're not succeeding when we really are. Um, but I think, you know, it's a balance between celebrating the wins and design discontent of wanting to go further. So I knew Pollen was gonna be a success when we actually got our first office and we had a number of employees there was five of us in the business and at that point we really felt like we were a business. We didn't feel like it was something that was just made up. And I think at that point we just landed a big contract with an ASS listed business and all of that together kind of made us realise that we were onto something. So one of the biggest challenges is probably one of the things that's happened more recently and I can talk about COVID and it's probably you know, on the top of everyone's minds if this was filmed in 2020. Um, but I think, you know, that point we were on a growth journey. We'd been on a growth journey from day one. You know, we'd gone from five people year one, 12 people year two, 18 people year three and 23 people year four. 
And then we got to something called COVID and we had to suddenly change our entire tactic from being talking about how we grow and how we expand to how we survive through a period. And I suddenly had to change the messaging to the team around survival and probably things that they didn't want to hear around potentially having to take a um, salary reduction or whatever it would be to get us through that period. And that I found really difficult because I'd been playing this let's keep going, let's keep going forward and suddenly had to change the entire language that we were communicating internally to. That impacted the business through obviously financially and we had to look at how we covered that but it impacted me personally through that because I would suddenly couldn't become an optimist as I'd always been and I had to be a realist and I had to change my language on communication and to do that was to me quite difficult but what I found was if I was honest with everybody and I told them exactly what was happening and I played everything in front of them, then it kind of came out okay. So it's really important to understand the financials of your business when you start it and through the journey that you're going to have. So I think, you know, what people always talk around is really understanding financials isn't just about having a great accounting brain. It's actually really about just knowing how your business runs and what's going to hit you. You can always go and ask people what the numbers mean, but I think you know the big one to me is is cash flow. Um, you know your P and L is important as your profitability. Your balance sheet kind of comes later in the journey. Let's be honest. I think the the biggest challenge is cash, and how you think about that in terms of not only what's coming in but what's going out. Um, particularly as you grow, suppliers will start paying you slower. You employees still need paying, your supplies still need paying and a successful business needs more cash than a failing business to a level. And then once you start to understand that and start to build that up, you really need to understand the financial impact of decisions you make and as an entrepreneur probably the bets that you are willing to place and the size of that bet in terms of the investment you're willing to make in something in the future and if it doesn't work, the impact and risk on the overall business you're taking. I think, you know, the thing I enjoy the most is the freedom it gives me. Um, but the speed at which you can change direction. I think, you know, it's great that you can do what you want and yes, you've got freedom, but you run your own business, so you're gonna work hard, you're gonna invest the time. So yeah, you've got a little bit of flexibility. But I think the main flexibility you've got is is your ability to pivot, your ability to go and think about something differently and the ability to get involved in to a level what you want to get involved in and let other people around you do the things that maybe aren't your strengths. I think that's kind of what I really enjoy. The hardest part of running your own business is finding a way of switching off. I think, you know, when you run your own business, you are constantly thinking about that business you constantly worry about it. You can be Saturday morning, you can be Friday night, and there could be something on your mind. And I think the hardest part is finding a way of switching off. I think one of the ways I try and do that is through socializing with friends and finding activities that keep me away from work and change my brain. So whether that's training um, for some sporting event or taking myself out into an environment where there's nothing that could relate me to work. So mobile phones and computers are out the, out the way. And, and finding that space really helps. When I set up Pollen, I didn't have a business partner, but I did have a network of people around me which gave me the confidence that I didn't need a partner. Because I think, you know, you do need a sounding board, you do need someone you can talk to about business. It is great to check in with somebody. And, and you know, day to day, I probably do miss having somebody that sits at the same level as me to challenge me. But I also turn around and say, the way around that is to find business partners in life. So I've got friends that are happy to kind of give me their honest view of, of the business and the world. You've got employees you've got to connect with that if you ask them questions and you set an environment where they can feedback, they act as your business partner. And I've got a wife who constantly reminds me of uh, and challenges me on lots of things that uh, keep, me, uh, keep me sane. So if I had to put together my tips for anyone starting their own business, I think the first tip I'd say is value is a key to a business. 
um, setting that up and, and living to them values. Now that doesn't mean to say you need to write down a values proposition and words on a wall. It means the behaviours of that you as a, as a business leader cascade down to your team and the behaviour you expect within your team and holding everyone accountable to that. That is more important than the right mission statement or the right strategy because what I would say is everything else can change and evolve and the second tip would very much be don't be afraid of changing or evolving things. Um, we set out building the business one way and as we wanted to build more service off offers we started to build divisions with people leading them. We suddenly realised we just created this beast of a business that had less people in it with lots of divisions and we brought it all back together and changed our approach. That, that pivot was quite a big pivot but a real uh, win for us. So I think you know, for people looking, shouldn't be a change, shouldn't be afraid of changing. Um, I think the other tip is use your network. You know, there's people out there that can help. You don't need to be the expert in everything, and you don't need to spend lots of money on advisors. There are support networks, there are brains you can pick, and there is some basic reading you can do. Yeah, down the line, I'm sure there's a need to invest in some expensive lawyers and research but i think in the early stages you've got to keep it low cost and to do that use people that are willing to help you because you can return that favor when they need help on something as well so i think they're probably the three things i'd, I'd say are, are really important